In today's video, we are doing yet another handbag unboxing. And if you've watched last week's video, which was also a handbag unboxing, you might be a little bit confused as to why I have another handbag here to unbox, or unbag rather. And I will explain all of that in just a second. But before I do that, I will just address the elephant in the room, which is kind of like my backdrop. Well, it's only an elephant in the room for those of you that have been watching my channel for some time, but I'm basically going through a phase where I need to experiment with the backdrop and I find the one on my sofa a little bit boring. So I'm kind of moving around the house recently. So excuse that. Let me know if you've got a preference down below though, because I'm still trying to figure it out. That ramble aside, let me go into explaining what happened to my Fendi bag and why I now have this Bulgari bag to show you. So I guess you could say it's like part two to last week's video. So if you haven't watched last week's video, maybe go and watch a little bit of that so you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. But in summary anyway, just in case you can't be bothered, last week I unboxed a Fendi baguette on my channel. It was a very beautiful unicorn Fendi bag, essentially, I'd bought that for myself for, I guess, Christmas as a present from me to me for what was what has been a very stressful year for everybody involved. Um, so I bought that, I unboxed it live, I asked for your guys' opinions as to whether I should keep it. And that was basically because I, and you could see live actually in my reaction, because I hadn't seen the bag before filming. Um, I had a few reservations about the bag, keeping the bag, and for those of you that did leave a comment on that video, thank you so much. It was really helpful to read all of your feedback. I do think the summary of the comments were very positive in terms of keeping the bag. Everyone acknowledged the beautiful colour. I think it's gorgeous. And, you know, the baguette is a very, very popular and very long-standing bag in Fendi's line. But as you can tell from the, the, I guess, the tone of my voice or, you know, how this story is progressing, I actually decided not to keep the bag. I know, I know, shock horror, because it was a beautiful, and it is a beautiful bag. I decided upon reflection of some of the reservations that I had, that it wasn't justified for me to keep it. And those, and I personally think for me, when there is doubt, there is no doubt. And so the fact that I was questioning whether I should keep the bag uh, was almost a sign that I probably shouldn't. And I like to really, really think through all of my purchases. I like to make sure that they are totally the right bag for me and my lifestyle. I just kind of had like an off feeling about the Fendi bag. So I had three main reservations. One was quality. So I talked about that in the video I showed you guys. The quality of the lining, I personally felt, felt was very cheap. Related to that, I also felt that the um, separate leather strap, let me just put this down actually. I also felt that the leather strap on the bag, the detachable strap, was quite cheap looking. It felt very, very flimsy as well, which I was not expecting, especially in comparison to the other bags in my collection. I would have thought at the price point of about £2,500 that it would be a little bit better quality. Same goes for the lining as well. And then just the overall delicate nature of the bag. I just felt very nervous in handling it. It was incredibly squidgy and soft, which for some people they might like that. It's very malleable, it's very satisfying to hold. But for me personally, I felt with my lifestyle, with all the kind of rules and regulations and you know, all the terms and conditions around like keeping the bag and not letting it rub on certain materials and not getting it out in the rain, it just seemed like a bit of an impossible task for me in the UK with my busy lifestyle, um, you know, to be able to keep that up which I definitely don't have for my other bags. The reason number two, I guess, relating to point of quality was the price point, because I actually didn't think based on number one that ergo the price was justified. I think although £2,500 is a very, very reasonable, and actually in today's world, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you know, £2,500 is probably quite affordable or cheap compared to other designers out there, you know, like your Chanel, your Hermes, your Dior, it's, I guess you get a lot more bang for your money in that sense, and also from a reputable and prestigious fashion house like Fendi. But at the same time, I felt like actually handling the bag and feeling the quality and the weight of the bag, I didn't think it was justified then in that price point. I have 
lots of other bags that are cheaper, my YSL Lulu, my uh, Chloe Faye, my Givenchy Antigona, all of those bags are probably like almost a thousand pounds cheaper than this Fendi bag and they're all made incredibly well. They are miles ahead in my opinion. That was reason number two. And then reason number three then, which leads on nicely to segue into this video was I kind of felt a bit bad that I bought another handbag for myself. I say another because I bought myself the um, YSL or Saint Laurent, I get confused between the two, um, Lulu bag earlier this year. And you know, it is locked down. I did kind of think, you know, do I deserve or need this bag at this moment in time? I kind of just bought something that I really liked the look of, which I do throughout the year anyway, but I felt like for such an, uh, a big expense compared to the usual stuff that I buy, uh, the stuff I actually need in life, I kind of took a bit of a reflection. I guess this is, you know, very adult Mel <laughs> speaking here, but I wanted to channel that money, those funds into a bag that I knew a certain someone else would enjoy way more than me with this Fendi bag. So I decided to return that Fendi bag and buy this Bulgari bag right here. And that special someone that's gonna receive it is of course my mum, who is the source and I guess the most responsible party for why I love bags so much. And I guess in a way kind of why this channel exists because she definitely instilled that expensive taste for things into me. And so I'm gonna unbox it with you and talk through a little bit around why I got this particular bag. I'm not sure if you guys will have seen many of these bags online before. I don't know that many creators have talked about Bulgari bags. I feel like Bulgari is lesser known for their bags, but more for their jewelry. So their serpentine watches, um, necklaces and things like that. I've even got my mum a serpentine bracelet before for Christmas. But also I find that the Bulgari uh, high-end jewelry and even just online their bags when I was considering buying this bag I looked at the quality and the quality just seems great the workmanship also looked amazing so I really wanted to get something a little bit special for my mum and I actually got this also from Harrods actually so I returned the Fendi bag to Harrods and then I ended up ordering online this bag from the Harrods website it was the last one in stock and I think it's a very very special bag it's equally special compared to the the Fendi bag but I do feel for me personally that having listed those reasons before on my apprehensions I feel much better in the knowledge that this bag is going to be a way more appreciated and loved purchase I'm sure some of you might have a guess of what bag this could possibly be but here we have the Bulgari Serpenty bag in this beautiful kind of like deep burgundy or like scarlet red. It's quite deep. I'm not sure if it's coming up on camera here. I guess it's kind of true to color, but maybe it's a little bit darker in real life. And it's got this beautiful, beautiful gradient kind of snake skin here. And you can see it follows through on the back as well. And it's got kind of goldy hardware, champagne gold hardware, I'd want to say. And you've got even that following through in the enamel um, snake buckle here. So like I mentioned, I bought this bag from Harrods. It was actually more expensive than my Fendi baguette that I'd bought. I ended up spending, I think it was 2,850 on this bag purely because I think it was snake skin, so snake skin being harder to find and naturally more expensive. I was happy to pay it because I do think that the size and the quality is so much better than the Fendi bag. And in fact, some of the, even the accessories inside, I feel like are just much more, I don't know, expensive touches to the bag, which other fashion houses I feel have not really done. And that was honestly the primary, one of the reasons why I looked at Bulgari because actually the funny story and follow my train of thought on this because I realize it's a little bit uh, going all over the place. But my mum, I overheard her basically saying just in a random conversation a few uh, weeks ago that she was looking for a red handbag, but none of the designs from other fashion houses were really piquing her interest. And so I banked that thought in the back of my head and fast forward a few weeks later when I then returned my Fendi bag, I actually thought, you know what? There's a woman who wants a bag more than I do and I have a specific requirement that I can go and look for this bag. So let me just see what's out there. And 
I came across this bag on Harrods. I didn't even know that they stocked Bulgari bags on their websites. And I think actually the only retailers that probably do are Harrods and Selfridges. But I did love the look of this particular bag. It really stood out to me because of the snakeskin design. There are loads of other different um, leathers and designs that Bulgari does in red, but I thought this one was way more special. And so th this one being the last in stock, I bought it immediately and I knew the size was gonna be great as well. I did some searching online, even on Bulgari's website to see how they wore it on the model because Harrods didn't actually show any size references. So anyways, let me open this bag up. So you've got just a um, pull closure. I guess it's kind of magnetized, but also you just kind of slot it in as like a popper. And I will let my mum have the joy of peeling back all of the plastic. And inside, it's quite like the Gucci Dionysus, I wanna say, and my mum has that bag, so hopefully she won't find it too similar. So inside you can see there's two big compartments here, and then you've got a zip compartment in the middle, and then you've got a zip pocket at the very back as well. Something to note is the actually the accessories inside. So what you might be able to see here is this little guy, which is a mirror. And I won't, again, like I said, I won't peel back all of the plastic and things. I'll let my mum do that herself. But I thought that was such a nice touch to have a little mirror. And also what I believe is inside. So this is the authenticity card. Um, what they've also popped inside, I think it's in the zip compartment here yeah so you get a little rain cover with the bag which I find amazing because I feel like Hermes and Fendi they sell them separately for their bags probably almost like a hundred pounds or something but this bag comes with it and let me see if I can open this and put it in neatly again um so basically it looks like this and you just I guess pop it over the bag put the handles put the handles through and your bag is rainproof and I think that's amazing I wish more bag companies did this and you know it all comes in with the price of the actual bag so I think that is such good value for money and really thoughtful actually, because this being a snakeskin bag, it is very delicate by nature. You will have to, you know, spend a bit more time maintaining it to make sure that there's no color transfer and things like that. But I think this is a really great touch and kind of goes to my point of like going the extra mile, all the expensive details of the bag. I think it far surpasses the baguette that I bought. So I'm very pleased with that. And you've got various other care things, in fact, let me just have a look. I'm wary of opening all these things because I want my mum to also open them, but I think this is just a care card. So they really have invested a lot of time in, you know, all of the extra details and just the craftsmanship in general is amazing. And what else do we have? We've just got loads of little cards, which, yeah, authenticity cards and stuff. So this bag, like you can see, is double strapped. So very, very handy. And I think it's just such a versatile hardware as well. And even color, because I think red is just such a beautiful, I think it's like a good all year round bag, especially now though for Christmas, I think it's such a nice festive color. And I think it's a great evening bag that can probably transition really well during the day as well. So anyway, that was everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed the unboxing of this beautiful bag. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think it was a good thing? that I returned the Fendi bag for this one, or should I have kept both? Let me know. And I'll be putting this baby back in its dust bag and then straight under the tree for Christmas. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a great Christmas and a safe one at that and a nice start to your new year. And I will catch you in my next video.